Well, King 5 has learned of an important new clue in a nearly 50-year-old mystery. A scientist has uncovered microscopic evidence in the unsolved case of D.B. Cooper. Chris Ingalls has followed leads for decades in the caper that's America's only unsolved skyjacking. And tonight, Chris has the exclusive story of this latest breakthrough. No one knows if he survived the jump, but a lot of people have searched for the missing money. Helicopters filled the skies in 1971, and teams of law enforcement combed the vast southwest Washington wilderness. But they couldn't find any clues about the man known as D.B. Cooper, who parachuted from a commercial passenger jet with $200,000 in ransom money. Until nine years later, when $6,000 of $20 bills was found underneath the top layer of sand, along the Columbia River at a place called Tina Bar. Tom Kay is a member of a scientific team, the only civilians granted access to Cooper evidence by the FBI 12 years ago. That evidence includes perhaps the most significant clue, the portion of ransom money a family discovered buried in sand while camping along a sandbar, Tina Bar, in the Columbia River in 1980. Techniques today can show us a lot more information than what they did then. Only recently did Kay discover these star-shaped algae called diatoms on the bills. So you found diatoms embedded within these stacks of bills. When we looked at the, at the uh, Cooper money under an electron microscope, which gives us very high magnification, we identified dozens of these diatoms. Here's the important thing. This type of algae is seasonal. The diatoms that we found are spring species. They bloom in the spring. They do not bloom in November when Cooper jumped. That's key because it means the ransom money entered the water months after Cooper jumped. We are now able for the first time to really use this new piece of evidence and eliminate a bunch of theories. For instance, Kay says it scuttles the FBI's original theory in the 1980s that the ransom money flowed from rivers in the suspected drop zone near Lake Merwin down through the Washougal River to the Columbia, the so-called Washougal washdown theory. And the money was not floating in the water for a year. Otherwise, we would have seen diatoms from the full range of the year. We only saw them from the spring, springtime bloom. So this puts a very narrow range on when the money got wet and was subsequently buried on Tina Bar. Kay's finding is being published in the journal Scientific Reports, marking the first time Cooper evidence has been peer-reviewed and published. It's been through peer review of two scientists that are in the field looking at diatoms and water dynamics. The new evidence does not lead any closer to the true identity of Cooper and whether he lived or died in the jump. And Kay admits it raises all kinds of new, unanswered questions about how some of the ransom money got in the Columbia River months after the jump. Cooper is still messing with us. The people in this building, the Seattle FBI, closed the Cooper case unsolved four years ago. That's one reason Kay is making his new evidence public. He's hoping that it's a piece of the puzzle that can help a citizen sleuth solve this 50-year-old mystery. In Seattle, Chris Ingalls, King 5 News.